Okay, I recently did a video where I was talking about a website I went to for my kids, um, and it's a website for kids, and how I realized that that website was accidentally dumping a lot of user information. Uh, again, this is a website for kids. It was dumping their birth dates, their email address, and their real names, stuff like that. And of course, I can't show you the actual site because that wouldn't be safe for those kids. I've already contacted the company. I'm waiting for them to do something about it. But uh, I want to give you an example. People asked exactly what was wrong and what could be fixed. And of course, I can't see what's on the server side, but I'm gonna, I created this example. I spent the last 30 minutes just creating this basic little example um, with uh, some fake user data and fake comments and stuff like that. So I can show you the sort of thing that went wrong and it's an honest mistake, but it should be a simple fix unless they have spaghetti code on their server. Uh, so real quick, here's my web browser. This is a server I just threw up. Um, I say that and it sounds like I'm throwing up. This is a server I just spun up. There we go. And uh, I got a few files here, got a couple HTML, and then I got some server-side PHP scripts that I'm going to show you. Uh, on the right here, I got my developer's console so we can see what's loading. And then here is, uh, I'm logged into the shell. And again, this is just a server I threw up, I spun up just, uh, you know, about 20, 30 minutes ago to run this on uh, so I can show it to you. So let's just see what's going on here. I made this basic little, I have comments and comments bad. Let's look at comments first. So it loads up this little comment box to post. It doesn't actually post anything. It's just there for looks. And then it loads up these comments from a database with a nice little avatar and usernames, the dates that they were commented. And we can also see what their comment is. So that was comments. Now let's look at <clears throat> bad comment. It looks exactly the same, but there is a key difference. So when you're loading up, so you have databases and you have to cross-reference databases. So normally you wouldn't, you could have a database with all your comments in it and basically hard code, usernames and stuff like that into there, uh, but you normally wouldn't do that. And in this example, I'm going to show you one of the reasons you would cross-reference is um, avatars. And so let's say someone changes their avatar, you want to update in the comments and you don't want to go through and change every entry in the database. So what is happening here is I have three PHP scripts, get comments, get user data and get user data bad okay now again let's look at I guess we'll look at the bad one first comments bad and the only difference between this and and the other one is the the PHP side of the script so you can see here if you open your, your developers console and you go to network and we can go to all or XHR since that's what we're looking at but I'll just leave it as all for now you can see here that we get user data bad and we get user comments so what my code is doing is it's loading up both those things, it's loading up user data, putting that into an array, and doing the same with the comments. And as it loops through the arrays uh, for the comments, the comment, it's, it's grabbing stuff from the database, it's grabbing the username, the date the comment was posted, and what the comment is. But again, we need the avatar, and you don't want to embed that into the table for the comments, because if someone changes their avatar, you want it to change on the comments. So that's why we also load up user data. So all we're loading up here, all we need is we need the username and their avatar so we can cross-reference it. But if I expand all of these, you can see that I'm loading up, I'm grabbing their username, their avatar, their email address, their status, whether they're a child or parent, which is how this was set up on that website. I did notice after I set this up, just before I went uh, to record this video, that I set up some of them as parents, but their birth dates, they're only like seven years old. But that was just because this is made up data. Uh, the last time they logged in, the date it was created, and their date of birth, first name and last name. This is all sort of things that I saw on that website, and that should not be dumped. You're not seeing it on the web page, but it's being sent to your web browser. And then the script is going through and grabbing information it needs and displaying it and you may not see it over here but it's still coming to your computer it is on your computer let's go back now and we'll just go to comments and now we'll look at or oh I forgot to change it in the script okay let's look at the script let me go ahead and go into comments uh, dot HTML yeah so right now comments and comments bad are the same except for this line we just changed that now let's go back in here and refresh this so again we're grabbing the comments and we're also grabbing user data but this time under user data we are only grabbing the username and their avatar because we don't need that other information that other information shouldn't be pushed to other users so it looks the same 
acts the same, but all that extra information is not being sent. Let's look again at that, uh, that output. So again, we have three PHP codes here. We'll actually look at the code in a moment, but here's the output. This one outputs your comments in a JSON format. So you get the username, you get the date it was posted and what the comment is and it does that for each of the comments. But then you have user data here and this is giving us the username for each user and their avatar. But get user data bad is dumping all of their information. So how easy is this to fix? Well, let's look at those examples. So we got get, we'll say get user bad. So what we're doing here is we're looking, oh, by the way, again, this is just a test, uh, an example. So there's lots of bad things about this that could be done better. For example, I'm not using a MySQL database, which is on a real website, you should be using something like MySQL. I'm using uh, SQLite 3 uh, database so that I can put it into this folder. So I can copy it to a ser server, put it in a folder and share it with you guys. I'm gonna post this on GitLab for you and I'll put a link in the description so you can download this code and look at it. But right now, the database is actually in a database file in the folder with all the scripts. And that is super, super bad. You never want to do that. Because basically, anybody who knows that what's being called can just pull down that entire database with all the tables. So when you're using MySQL, you're actually using a server to connect to all this stuff. The server is connecting to itself, if that makes any sense. Where here, I'm just using a database file. You, you don't want to do that. If you are going to use SQLite 3 on a website, I'd recommend not in most cases. You want it outside of your web directory. But that's not what was wrong with the website I'm talking about. I'm just pointing out, I know that I did this as in this example because this is just an example. Our big problem, again, going back into our uh, database here, is the same the same exact code would be for MySQL, I'm pretty sure SQL and uh, SQLite and SQLite 3 is the select. So you're saying select, what do you want to select and where do you want to select it from? So we're using this database file and there's two tables in there right now, a users table and a comments table. Right here we're saying select all, everything from the users table which means it's displaying everything from the users table. You don't want to do that. And that's going through that and now putting it as JSON. What we do want to do is if we go into get user data instead of get user data bad, this is all we had to change is this one line. Instead of having an asterisk there saying all, we say we just want the username and the avatar. Those are the only two things we want. So I can't see what that website is doing on their server. But again, unless it's spaghetti code, it's something as simple, either they have an asterisk in this spot and it's dumping everything, or they went in here and did things like, show me the username, show me their date of birth, show me their last login date, log in, something like that. I don't remember exactly how I wrote it in the database, um, which is, is an easy thing to do by accident, but it's also, very bad when you do it by accident, especially on a website like the one I'm talking about, but it should be easy to fix. They should be able to go through, again, they don't, they shouldn't have to go and change every single page, just the server side that's serving it up. So again, the only thing they would have to do, for example, if this was their code, was come in here and do this. Username, comma, avatar, and save that. And that's all they would have to do, and it would fix the problem. And they might have to do that in a few different files, but hopefully um, they've written the code so that it's not, there shouldn't be too many files they have to share, change because things should be, code should be used more than once. And if you're grabbing information in a certain way, um, that code should be in one spot. Again, not repeating code programming. I kind of fumbled around there, but I think hopefully you guys get what I'm saying. So again, this is something you should look at, especially if your kids are using a website. It doesn't take a lot. So let's say you are Joe Schmo. You know nothing about computers. Your kids are on a website, okay? Like this, okay? This is their website and there's comments and stuff and other users, whatever it is. All you have to do is open up your developer's console, okay? F12 in Chrome or Control Shift I. If you don't have F12, keys might be a little bit different in other browsers, but just look it up. And then you just go to your network tab, right here, network. Make sure you have all selected and just start clicking 
on these things and you'll start seeing different information. Now, the, if you don't want to go through it all, again, just click XHR. That's usually XML, HTML reference or HTTP reference or something like that. And most of the time nowadays, it's going to be JavaScript. But you click on that, that's usually information being sent from a database on a server or something like that. And from there, you can come in here and just right click this and say expand recursively and just start looking through here. Again, you don't have to be a genius. You start seeing other people's email addresses or phone numbers or private information. Uh, you got to go, whoa, whoa, that's bad. Again, you open up your developer's tools, F12 in, in a Chrome-based browser, go to Networks, XHR, and then just start clicking through these and see if you see anything you shouldn't. If you do, you need to stop using that site and let them know so that they can fix it. So again, that is, hopefully that explains the question because I did have comments asking, you know, what exactly was the problem and how easy is it to fix? Uh, and it was just someone asking because they, they were wondering, and again, I don't know what's going on on the server side, but this is what's happening. Their server is sending my web browser everyone's information. I'm not seeing it in the web page, but it's being sent to my server. Whether I have this console open or closed, it's being sent to my web browser. Um, and that means that anybody who's surfing that site can see that information. And even if you're not gonna do something bad with it, that doesn't mean someone else is gonna do something bad with it. Again, I contacted them just over a week ago. Uh, they sent me a response saying it was gonna be passed along and asked me to log out and log back in. Again, this has nothing to do with logging out and logging back in because this is information coming from the server. Um, that's something, it's, it's a security thing. Security things should never be done on the client side. So if logging out and logging back in fix the problem, there's still a problem. Um, so yeah, again, I'll put this up on GitLab and I'll put a link in the description of this video so you can download. And all you have to do is, you know, spin up a web server uh, with a PHP and um, the SQLite 3 or SQLite 3 or however you say, it, I think it's SQLite 3 um, plugin or module for PHP. And you just copy this folder again. In this example, I put the database right in the folder. You never want to do that because that means anybody who can figure out, figures out that's that, they can just type in data.db. And now they, I can download the entire um, database and they have it on their computer. Everything, whether it was coming out in the script or not. So you never want to put your database in the folder that your program is running in on your website. It should be outside of the web directory or preferably using a server like MySQL. Uh, SQLite is usually used for local things, like on your phone it will be used for contacts, your SMS messages, where it's all stored on your phone, uh, not necessarily on servers. You can use it on servers, and I'm not saying it's horrible, uh, but even the creators of it say if you're going to have big databases, this is that you shouldn't be using their project because it's for smaller stuff. So definitely, if your website's big, um, I know that if you set up at like a next cloud server, uh, you have the option to go either way. I think the default is a SQLite database, and but it constantly warns you you should upgrade to or switch over to or migrate to however you want to say it to a MySQL. So again, uh, yeah, check this out. Uh, don't don't try going to the server because I'm going to shut it down as soon as I'm done recording this. But I'll put a link in the description to GitLab, gitlab.com forward slash metalx1000. Uh, I'll call it something like um, bad database dump or something like that. But I'll also try to put a link in the description. And you can just download the zip file, un unpackage it to, uh, to your web directory. And as long as you have PHP and SQLite PHP module installed, uh, you should be good to go. And you can play around with this yourself. So check that out. I thank you for watching. I hope that answered some questions. I hope it educated people who may not be technical. You do want to open up this developer's console every once in a while and look at stuff because um, it doesn't it, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much to go, oh, look, there's information here that shouldn't be here. You know, it's, it's plain text and words. So thanks for watching. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. And check out all the links in the description. I hope that you have a great day.